Hi friends, I'm Sandeep Singh and in this video I'm going to be talking about how electronics and electrical engineering is basically like in university. I'm going to go a bit in depth with like all of the courses which I've learned in the first like two years of my university. The degree which I'm basically taking right now is electronics and computer science. So it's basically electronics and electrical engineering and computer science together. Honestly, like I kind of dislike electrical engineering. It's not because of like the cost or anything. Like the cost is fine. Like I personally just dislike it because like I think I came in with a lack of knowledge. Like I saw my university, it had a course for computer science and like my goal was just to do computer science. But like suddenly they also like had this course about electronics and computer science and like I didn't really know much about it but like all my like my parents and my relatives said that like that like I should go for it because like it's more job opportunities and like stuff like that. And I literally like came in with like zero knowledge of what electrical engineering is like. If you like plan to do like a course in university, like I suggest like you should have like at least like the basic knowledge of like what to expect when you're doing that course. And like you should do a course because like you love it, not because like job opportunities and like not because like all of your friends and family and stuff like that is telling you to do it. But you need to do it because like you personally love it. So like choose a degree which like you personally love and Try and have like the basic knowledge of like the specific degree that you're choosing. Like try to see like what to expect when you're actually inside university. Now I'm going to talk about all the subjects which I had in like electronics and electrical engineering. For first year, for engineering, it was all very general. All of the engineering students, we're basically like doing all of the same things. So in first year semester one, we had a course called Engineering 1. And we had a project where we actually like had contact with like our university alumni, who was also like an electrical engineer. And like basically we had to like ask him some questions of like what being like an electrical engineer is like and we basically had to make like an essay out of it it was like quite chill and we also had like a rube goldberg machine a rube goldberg machine is basically like an overly complex machine to do like a very simple task it's like quite fun actually and then we also had like an engineering for people design challenge where essentially we had to like find like real world problems of like water and like sanitation problems in like countries which are like not doing too well. And then I also had another course called engineering math 1A. This this course was basically like A-level math and I think like if you're doing further maths in like A-levels and like you plan on doing like engineering in university that can like really like help you. And like for engineering math 1A, we basically learned about like eigenvalues and like matrix and like about logarithm and stuff like that. But the only thing which was a bit weird about this is that we had like an exam for engineering maths, but like since COVID happened, we all had to do it in our respective places. I was actually in Malaysia at the time and essentially the exam was about 1 p.m. UK time, which was actually 9 p.m. in Malaysian time and it went on to like 12 a.m. It was literally 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. That was my exam, which was just weird because there was no like 24 hour window or stuff like that. And then for year one, semester two, we had a course called Engineering Maths 1B. And essentially for that, that was more about further maths in A levels. So we learned about like implicit differentiation and like area under the curve and like find the volume of a curve. And like we also had like about Taylor and McLaurin series. Now I'm going to go to year two. Now in year two, let me just tell you, the jump from year one to year two, the jump is really big. Now in year two, it wasn't like general engineering. Since I'm doing electrical engineering, so all my courses were focused on like electronics and electrical engineering. So in year two, semester one, my first course was about analog circuits. And in this course, I basically learned about like inductors and like diode and like full bridge rectifier. And we also like had an app called like LT Spice. And basically in that app, we could like make circuits and we could like run it and like find the result of it. And I also learned about like noise and interference and like signal to noise ratio and stuff like that. And then in that course, I also learned about amplifiers and we did a bit of like nodal analysis. I think in that course, I feel like the lecture slides weren't done so well and like and like the teaching was like a bit mediocre. And then I also had engineering maths 2A and essentially we learned about like Laplace transform and about Fourier series. And then I had another unit called microelectronics and essentially for this we learned about like drift conduction of electrons and like we learned a lot about like atomic kind of stuff. And like we also learned about electric fields and like a PN junction and like we learned about like MOS transistors principles and like MOS transconductance. This lecture was actually quite good like I was very pleased with the slides that he made. Like I feel there's a big difference between like my other units like how they presented at work and this unit. 
like after every lesson we also had like this table with like a key summary of like what the lecture was actually about so essentially like before the exam i would just be reading all like the key summaries which i think we should have been done with like the other subjects as well and now i'm going to go to year two semester two in year two semester two i had a unit called digital system design now i feel this course was extremely tough and honestly like a lot of students also complained about how the lecture actually taught the material because honestly when I was actually watching the lecture videos of this topic, I've been watching it in like 2x speed and essentially even with that amount of speed, the lectures weren't very engaging at all and essentially like, like I was watching it and halfway through, I just kept on falling asleep. And like for this course, we learned about like binary numbers and like we learned about like D flip flops and we learned about memory and like we talked about like how transistors are in like a NAND and like in a NOR gate and stuff like that. And then for another unit, which was called Engineering Maths 2B, this was the toughest match course I, like, I had in university. And essentially for this, I learned about like gradient divergence and like curl of like vector fields and stuff like that. And about line integration and like flux and like Green's theorem for flux. And I also had, like, had to do some kind of triple integration kind of thing. And I also had like a thing called Bayes' theorem. And then also like had hypothesis testing and stuff like that. Then I had another unit called professional development engineering. And this was quite chill. Like this one was mainly about like ethical kind of stuff. So essentially, we just had to like make essays about ethical stuff. But the thing is, the essays were marked very weirdly. Like, honestly, I think no one actually like managed to get above 70. Some of us like just thought like they just gave us like a random mark and like didn't care about anything else because there wasn't even like proper feedback. Like some people didn't even get any feedback. Just got like a casual like 60% and stuff like that. So it was just a bit weird. And then I had another unit called Sensor Networks and Data Analysis. And essentially for this unit, it was split into three parts. Like the first part was about like Fourier series and like periodic signals and aperiodic signals. And, and then we also had a bit of machine learning in Python. We did, and we did it in some kind of like online notebook. And, and like the third part was more about modulation and about like analog modulation and like multiplexity and stuff like that. And it's more about communications. And for my final unit, it was about software and, and embedded systems laboratory. And this course was basically split into two parts. Like the first part was about like C programming and the second part was about amplifier design. And essentially for this lab, went on for like every week, for like 10 weeks. And essentially like this lab worked on like what was the week before. So like if you missed the week before, you also like won't realize what's going on on like the next week, which was a bit weird. And honestly, like I was in Malaysia, so I couldn't even like attend the labs. And I basically like skipped six labs. I was, I was very behind because like I didn't know what was going on because I wasn't there and like we had quizzes and like we had, we had some assignments which was dependent on like what we learned on the lab and I wasn't there at all. Essentially like I found this website where it kind of like had some answers about the stuff which I was learning and I kind of like plagiarized it a bit. We, we supposed to have like have this kind of like nuclear board which we're supposed to take from the lab and since I wasn't there for like this first six weeks I never like had the board and I still don't have it now. Luckily like I found that website which like kind of helped me during my assignments and I barely passed because like I found that website. And honestly for that lab, I don't think like, anyone could actually do it alone. Cause like after like I actually came to Edinburgh and like went to the lab, like everyone was discussing in groups. Cause like we had to discuss in groups or like then we'd be left behind. And like honestly like in university, like you have to be along with friends like I feel like you should like discuss answers with each other and like work together in groups and like not just do everything by yourself like even in exams like I don't do my exams like by myself because like everything is online now I discuss my friends like during the exam and and like honestly like I think everything in university should be done like together all right that's it for this video and thank you for watching goodbye